Earlier today, the Supreme Court had ruled that immigrants held by the government facing deportation are no longer entitled to bond hearings even after months or years of detention. Basically, the Supreme Court has authorized indefinite detention. In a splintered 5-3 to three decision, the court's conservatives said that the relevant statute does not hint, as, Samuel Justice, or as Justice Samuel Alito wrote, at the broad reading of the right to bail hearings adopted by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Now, that uh, lower court had uh, earlier ruled that an immigrant held in detention must be given bond hearing every six months, and that detention beyond the initial six-month period is only permitted if the government can prove that this person needs to be detained any further. So this is what's going on, right? You can take a nonviolent immigrant uh, and lock them up if you believe that they committed a crime. Indefinitely. You don't have to have bond hearings anymore. You can keep them beyond six months. You can keep them a year, three years. It's already happened before. In fact, this case was based on a case that had happened previously where somebody who was joyriding, who had a little bit of drugs, um, had two, uh, two different convictions, misdemeanor drug possession and uh, joyriding charge, end up, ended up getting put in prison for three years. Three years. Now, that's what they can do, and now they can do it, again, indefinitely. Earlier, the Ninth Circuit was able to reverse that, uh, uh, reverse that and make it so that they needed uh, to have those hearings to make sure that people uh, were a threat that needed to keep, uh, be kept in prison. So this, of course, uh, Supreme Court decision reverses that. Oh, boy. Now, this decision, of course, brought a dissent from Justice Stephen Breyer. Now, Breyer uh, said this. He said that many thousands of individuals involved in this case are persons who believe they have the right to enter into or remain in the United States. And a sizable number of those people turned out to be right. So understand that. A lot of these people are immigrants. They are legal immigrants that get imprisoned and also faced deportation for something that they did. But again, they're legal immigrants. So... Again, this is the Trump administration basically cracking down on legal immigration. Now, he continues, and I love this dissent. He said, We only need to recall the words of the Declaration of Independence. In particular, its insistence that all men and women have certain unalienable rights, and that among them is the right to liberty. He called this ruling a, quote, legal fiction. Whatever the fiction, would the Constitution leave the government free to starve, beat, or lash those held within our boundaries? If not, then, whatever the fiction, how can the Constitution authorize the government to imprison arbitrarily those who, whatever we might pretend, are in reality here in the United States? And in the United States, we are not supposed to indefinitely detain someone without a hearing, without bail, without any of that. Now, Breyer added, no one can claim, nor since the time of slavery has anyone, to my knowledge, successfully claimed that persons held within the United States are totally without constitutional protection. Now, he was joined in his uh, dissent by Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Sonia Sotomayor. Elena Kagan had recused herself uh, because of her previous work during the Obama administration. Uh, now, all the conservative justices, of course, argued that no, the lower court ruling, we weren't even supposed to hear this. Um, that's not our job. So, and, and also, yeah, yeah, we think you should be able to basically keep people in jail indefinitely. Wonderful. Now, the ruling from the Ninth Circuit Court gave a six-month deadline that applied to a wide range of immigrants from people detained after entering the United States for the first time to long-time legal residents. Now, the person I was talking about earlier uh, was Alejandro Rodriguez. Now, Alejandro Rodriguez was a permanent legal resident. He came to the country when he was a baby and uh, became a legal resident. Now, 
the Department of Homeland Security started removal proceedings because of a conviction for misdemeanor drug possession and joyriding. So again, have a misdemeanor for drugs, likely marijuana, which shouldn't be illegal in the first place, and, oh, joyriding. So you don't hurt anybody. It's, not, it's a nonviolent crime. And what happens to him? He gets locked up for three whole years. Come on. This guy had a job. He had children to take care of. But no, let's lock him up. Let's, and now they have the ability to lock anybody up who's an immigrant indefinitely. That's not a good sign. That's not a good situation. Now, the Trump uh, administration has shown that it is extremely anti-immigrant. And a lot of our uh, people that are in prison right now are people in prison, uh, federal prisons, I should say, for immigration crimes, for crossing the border illegally, or uh, other things related to their immigration status. And now we're going to keep them in, in prison indefinitely. Who's going to pay for that? You're going to pay for that. Instead of letting them out of prison um, and all that. So, look, it, it's a terrible situation. Um, now, there's a little bit of hope, I guess. What they're doing is they're sending it back to the lower courts. However, now the lower courts have to decide whether or not the detainees have a constitutional right to a bail hearing. Well, yes. I, I'm with Stephen Breyer on this one. They absolutely do. Just They're in this country. They should have constitutional protections. We should not be able to lock people up indefinitely forever. Just because they emigrated here does not mean that they do not have rights. So this is not a good ruling. Not a good day uh, if you're an immigrant, especially. But unfortunately, it's everything that we expected out of a conservative Supreme Court. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.